I think it's time for the new opening. We are just clocks. Yes, the student council room is a chaotic place. <laughs> Captures the essence. Hey. All the characters are great. Ultra romance, right? Ultra romantic. Who are you? Who are who are you? Who are you? <laughs> I don't. I know you are. Show offs. I would love to see the dad be featured more. Yeah, quite the quite the episode at the track meet. There's something very Doctor Strange about this opening. Yeah, there we go. The infinity of teenage angst and romantic desperation. The arrows again. Crossing and exploring and parodying various genres. Craziness. And once again, the whole school crumbles. I feel like it is some of the greatest visual moments. I guess thinking about it now and all the times I've, I've done reactions, it's not that common for me to love an intro off the bat. I think, as usual, I need to give it some time to breathe. I'm trying to think of openings that grab me right away. There were definitely one or two in My Hero Academia. Obviously, Red Swan, and it goes without saying. I think also This Is My my Last War, whatever that, that song is called. I would put the first Attack on Titan song and also the, the first season opening for Mob Psycho in there too, but it's cheating because I'd already heard the music. Overall solid though. Solid opening. I'm sure I'll love it by the end of the season. Yuki Shirogani wants to mediate. She does not hate him. She deeply cares about him. There's a concern there. They have an interesting relationship. You're one to talk. That's rich coming from Yuki. <laughs> Just casually telling someone to confess. Cut you off just a handful of times in there. Yes, that is so accurate. <laughs> That's basically 99% of what the audience sees. Right. He's also a good person at heart. They're both saying the same thing. Oh, isn't that a little bit gray area? <laughs> right. They're actually pretty similar in a key way, which is probably why it's so easy for the two of them to provoke one another. I mean, they have a lot of differences in the way they act or what they focus on. Like, Inumiko is trying to create the order that she lacks in her life, and Ishigami is trying to avoid order as much as possible. But they're similar in that they're both very principled. They say opposites attract, and I feel like that's true to some degree, but I actually feel like being similar is the, is the greater force, and the opposite traits that act as the magnets toward each other will be complementary gaps along similarities, if that makes sense. As someone who lives what I would consider to be a somewhat unorthodox life in certain key ways. I feel like out of the people I've dated long term, they were all similar in that way. Even if I didn't know it at first, they turned out to be very unorthodox or non-standard in the way they, they did certain things or, or looked at certain things at least. It's also possible that everyone is just like that when you get to know them deeply. Like maybe there is no such thing as like a standard person. But with that as a base, at the same time, I feel like the people that I'm most attracted to and I've had the, the strongest or maybe most passionate bonds with have been those that were very similar to me but had key things that I lacked or felt I lacked. And I would wager a guess that those things that serve as glue are areas the individual is aware they need to grow in. That seems to be the case for these two, who are both sort of outside of the conventional path in their key way. They're both kind of outsiders, right? And that has partly to do with the fact that they march to the beat of their own drum, so to speak, in ways that is not readily rewarded, especially in high school or at this age, yet have sort of coped with that or adjusted to that by going to an extreme and having blinders on, as Ishigami put it. Ishigami has his own blinders on. I think that comes up for him when he talks about hating things categorically, like couples. That's a protective structure he's built up artificially to protect himself. And Ino's sense of order is partly the result of her feeling lost, wanting to feel like there's safety in the world. What, confess? No, I'm gonna force a confession out of him! Where have we heard this before? Was it Ishigami that gave her the flower? I thought it was what you got me. It's the same person. Huh. Again, you're one to talk. <laughs> Interesting. The, this kind of inter intervention doesn't really work, though. You can't tell people how to feel. They're so predictable, huh? They're each in an interesting position where they have the best view of their friend's flaws, if you, if you know what I mean. They can see what their respective friend can't. The Ishigami, you know, friendship plan, keeping my expectations low. 
Ooh, mutual struggle. It's not a bad idea. You gotta pick something sufficiently important, though. Sufficiently big. Complimenting each other, the true ultimate task. <laughs> nice. You know, but if you're really secure in how you feel, you can do this. You can do this without fear. Don't be petty. Good start. Facts. Yep. <laughs> can you imagine? I actually, yeah, come to think of it, I was harsh on this idea, but no, that actually goes a long way. This is critical, though. If she says something wrong, if she doesn't actually give a compliment, it'll be a betrayal. Because he did it first. Oh no, it all went horribly wrong. It was going so well. Yeah, Ishigami made a leap of faith and, like, fell 100 meters to his death. If you're battling with someone, you want to reward the things you want more of, right? Punishing people for moments of kindness is more than just a, a lost opportunity. It's like a net bad. It pushes them in the other direction. You know what this makes me think of? It's a little bit different, but it's just a cool exercise like this. In high school and college, I spent a lot of time at a friend's house with his family. It's sort of like a second family of mine. And we would always eat dinner together and there were intense daily and very heated debates about, you know, this or that. At some point, for a, a brief time period, we started just for fun having a debate and and then deliberately switching sides and having to debate the other person's position. It might sound really stupid, but it ends up being a great exercise and it helps you reveal how much of your argument is just you being a stick in the mud, how much you're attached to it and how much you're maneuvering the, the ideas to fit an established point of view that you, you already have. Just in general, anytime a side seems super obvious, there's a chance that that's because it's just right and it is obvious but I feel like that also should be a red flag most of the time, that the nuances of the other side are being missed, especially if it's an idea that seems to consistently pop up or has been around for a long time. There's probably a really good reason for that, and if it seems like just pure evil or complete nonsense, then chances are it means we're not really understanding it in its full complexity. Tying it back to this exercise, I think one of the benefits of this is they have emotional reasons to be taking these stances. They're each a threat to the other in a certain key way, I guess, but it's not really about the other person as much as it's probably about themselves. There's a lot they stand the game by trying to put that down even if it's just for a moment because it will likely reveal things that they don't know about themselves sometimes you gotta go down to go up i guess <laughs> ear cleaning uh i don't know i don't know i'm skeptical i'm skeptical that's not a prerequisite but, but the question is, are we getting oxytocin? Are we getting sufficient oxytocin from this physical contact? Feed each other! At least they have enough cake this time. Carry her like a princess! Uh, I, I feel like this is going too physical too fast is- this is- wow, this is more than just friendship. <laughs> Call on the big guns! Here we go. Yep, nailed it. Like they say, indifference is the true opposite of care or whatever. And autotune for some reason. Autotune confessions. I think it's just like short circuited. <laughs> 10 years of dealing with her. Nico has been handled. Uh, Wait, what? I'm glad they left the one on the cutting cutting room floor. Kaguya wants to distract him. As if she hasn't distracted him from his roles enough. Oh, it's a mixer. It's a dating event disguised as a casual activity, like every activity. Well, he learned how to sing, didn't he? He's been taught by the best. Hey, this is, this is new Ka Kaguya, and it feels great. It's so refreshing. Hayasaki Ai wants to keep her back. That should be the title of this <laughs> this episode. Hayasaki Ai wants to keep her in neuroticism. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Amusement quarters. Yeah, he's, he's innocent. He thinks it's actually about karaoke. Someone thinks highly of herself. <laughs> That's probably not wrong. I mean, she's very shapely. I mean, we all saw the OVA. <laughs> That's sort of alarming. Send in an agent. Hayasaki I2, her alter ego. Yeah, there's gonna be that one kid though. Yeah, he did he did tell you he was gonna be a mixer. 
Oh no, does he remember? I feel like I developed some feelings in that episode. He does remember. Back off, she's mine. <laughs> oh. Really? I feel like that's when it's just getting good. You, you leave now? It was getting fun, okay. Yeah, she's got some hang-ups about this, huh? See, Kage has sent in a danger without realizing it. She's human, you know? She's playing a dangerous game with herself. Like, she's flirting to keep him distracted. But she's also flirting. You follow the, the rituals of something, you act something out, it becomes real to an extent. You know, like, you flirt with someone for fun, it becomes flirting. You start to like it, if it goes well. So many of your emotions follow physical and behavioral cues. Oh, wow. It's called push pull. She's gonna be great at it. She's gonna crush it right now. I'm sure. My feelings. <laughs> Very appropriate choice. <laughs> Why are all voice actors so good at singing? <laughs> Enjoy it. Enjoy your life, Miyuki. Please protect me. <laughs> That's true, she's making leaps and strides in her behavior and outlook. Oh, we saw right through it. That's kind of alarming and also charming. Here they are getting closer for real. Yikes, what an outlook. Uh, this is, no, don't you know what dating is? You hide your worst traits until you are in a relationship. <laughs> then once they're locked in, bam, that's when you can let it all out. <laughs> it's just effective dating strategy 101. These kids have so much to learn. Oh, it's like, yeah, I want him to show it. They're there. I mean, the audience sees them, at least. See, this interaction has taken a new life, hasn't it? They actually seem like a great pair. They seem very compatible. Very responsible. Good friend. But I don't know, why do I feel like it's not what she really wants? I bet this is a ship, right? Oh, no. A little too fast there, eh? No, no, this is... Just giving Mew an opportunity to be the man. You've played right into his hands. The guy blew a good opening. I mean, I feel like the girlfriend dumping a thing could be solid if it's sincere. He, like, went right from that to max creepiness in seconds. I will say, from experience, as weird as that is to say, you can make a night of going out and telling people you got dumped. Because everyone's been there. It actually fits in really well with, with going out because it makes you harmless in a certain key way. And it instantly connects you with the other person's experience because everyone knows what it's like to be heartbroken. So you just start out being on the same side with total strangers. Oh, she's listening. Again with the Pokemon hat. Ooh. Taking a little farther? She's definitely towing a line. This is very exciting as an episode because of that reason. She's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really made an impression on her, huh? But it's not only a game. It's not only her proving herself to Kaguya. On some level, she really wants this. Yikes. This could be potentially friendship ending. Though I think I know how it'll end. A non exchange student who can't speak Japanese. Oh, this has got to be ultimate panic for Kaguya. Kaguya preemptive, preemptively strikes. Yeah, this being in the darkness like this, her imagination is going to run wild. It's the not knowing, the imagining something bad is happening at this very moment, exactly, that's going to be destroying her. Honestly, I would do the same. I would not be able to sit still in this situation. This is actually a thing people do. There's like coat hangers in these doors on purpose. Yep. Well, guess what? That's some bad news for you. Do it, it'll be fun for us. <laughs> it's a confession. No, she's gonna do it though. The panic and fear is gonna override her desire for self preservation. Yes, you are. Just embrace your true self, speaking of which. 
Always. <laughs> I don't know. I would not be able to plot at this moment. I would have been in that room so fast. So you gotta stop using people. Haven't you learned from your mistakes? This is what got you into this mess in the first place. This is not growth, at least yet. Oh god. <laughs> No! <laughs> and you thought the OVA was, was where it all went down? May as well just, you know, take a look, just to make sure. <laughs> I bet it did. Was it food? Oh, she also experienced the, the demon rumbling. Oh. Yeah, there are people like that. Oh no. Fujiwara is all excited. She came all this way. Oh yeah, they had this in common. <laughs> Trauma. Trauma flashbacks. Okay, at least she's not disappointed. I was worried about that. There's no idea what's going on. No idea. Boy, Miyuki really blew that situation, didn't he? <laughs> Points for honesty. Yeah, she did, like, drag her into this, sort of drag her down this episode. Yikes. It's a little bit of manipulation here, no? It's not a nice thing to say. Speaking of similar traits attracting... <laughs> I want to hear his rapping. It's not because you're rapping. <laughs> Don't do it in front of other people. <laughs> That's amazing. An ending! Very magical princess vibes. Oh, it's like a different genre. He's an attack on Titan Farmer. What is this fanfic? Oh, she's in the moon. Got it. He's gotta fly his Wright Brothers plane to space? Huh. Yeah, I'd watch it. I would watch this anime. I like the different style. <laughs> this is awesome. What the heck? Did not expect this. Speaking of sea slugs, it's Starship Troopers, but... With Ghost in the Shell and Butterflies and Gundam. I'm a little bit confused. Oh, it's Chica. I'm a little bit confused. Is she also the villain in this story? I need to watch that again. That was amazing. How to make a full movie in, in ending song. I think that's my favorite ending of the show so far. Speaking of enjoying them on the first take. <laughs> While that episode was also a combination of skits, it felt like there was a coherent theme in... Well, I don't know how to exactly put my finger on it, but just very generally, people being a mirror for our own traits. And how relationships with other people play a fundamental role in revealing who we are if it's something that we can pay attention to. Ishigami and Ido need each other, and Hayasaki and Kaguya have something they both need to learn from each other as well. Kaguya is seeming to not get the lesson though. I mean, like, she keeps using other people, or seeing other people as tools. That was exactly what got her into this mess, yet she continued doubling down on that in this episode. Part of it to me feels like a mixture of loneliness and feeling ineffectual. Feeling like she can't influence her environment herself, if that makes sense. Sometimes the people who are the most controlling or who are grabbing onto power the strongest are the people who feel the least control or feel the biggest danger of a loss of control. There's a freedom that's lacking. This is a very fun episode, but in its way, there's a darkness in here. The juxtaposition of the two, I think, is what makes it so thrilling. You know, the scene with Miyuki and Hayasaka was one of the best skits for developing romantic tension, I think, so far, which is saying something in a show about romantic tension. It's interesting how much chemistry there is between the two of them, in a way that feels a lot more natural than with him and, and Kaguya. 